How you doing everyone? Greetings and welcome to episode four of Learning Batari Basics. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little look at the play field. Now the play field on the Atari is something that sits just on top of the background on screen. And generally what it is, is it's what we would use to build the platforms in a platform game or to build the mazes in a maze type game. And a really, really good example of exactly what the play field is, is if ever you've played combat on the Atari 2600, it is what is used to make up those walls that kind of stop our tank from shooting at the other player or also to pass to the other side of the screen. And well, what we've been doing up until now is we've been looking at sprites, which we can draw ourselves and put anywhere we want on screen, and also missiles, which are under the control of those sprites. And we've been using those more or less as kind of bullets in shooting games and things like that. Well, very much, like the missiles are under control of sprites. With the play field, there is also an object called the ball, which is a fifth object we can put on screen to move around independently. And that's kind of under the control of the play field. And I'll show you why in a moment. But what I'd like to do to begin with is to show you how we can position the ball on screen and we can actually use it in a game. So in order to do that, I'm after writing up a fairly simple program and very, very little of this is new to you. We've covered pretty much all of it before. What I'm starting off doing is I'm declaring two variables, an X and a Y variable, and I'm sticking the value of 50 into each of them. And then I'm opening up my main loop and we've got a colupf command here, which is one we haven't seen before. What we've been looking at before, a colup0 to control the color of the player zero sprite. And there's also a colubk to control the background color. Well, this guy here is to control the color of the play field. And equally, the ball will be set as the same color as the play field. So what I've done here is I've set my colupf to the hexadecimal value of 22. So it'll be whatever color hex 22 gives us. Now, bal x and bal y are the x and y positions for the ball. So I've set bal x to equal x. So it'll take the value of uh, the x variable I declared up here, which has 50 in it when we begin, and bal y exactly the same. It'll take the value of the y variable, which has 50 in it up here. And then it's stuff we've covered before. We've got our if joy zero right, then x equals x plus one. Move the ball across to the right side of the screen. If it's pushed to the left, x value is decreased. Move across to the left and our up and down as well. Up will decrease the value of y and down will decrease the value of y. And then we're drawing the screen and we're popping back to main and doing it all over again. So when we run that little program, what we will get on screen is a tiny little ball of one pixel wide by one pixel high right here at position 50 50 on the screen and we can move it around with the joystick because we're after setting it up to be able to do that kind of thing so it's another object that we control we can control in a game pretty much the way we would control any of the other objects missiles or any of that kind of stuff but it's very small at that. So we can change the width and we can equally change the height of it. And in order to change the width and the height on those, what we would do is pretty much using exactly the same program as I used before, laid out in exactly the same way. I'll show you. I've just got two extra commands in here. What I've got is I've got ball height equals eight. You can set that anywhere up to 255 to cover the entire region of the y-axis. But I set it to eight so that we'd have a ball of eight high. And here I've got CTRLPF, which is like play field control. And we saw a command pretty much like that before to do with sprites and also to do with missiles. And we could position multiple sprites on screen, kind of mirror images, and do the same for missiles as well and make long sprites and all that kind of stuff using that. Well, this is pretty much the same thing. And I'm going to put a chart up on screen from random terrain to show you exactly how that works. But what I've done is we assign it a hexadecimal value again. So we use our little dollar sign or a little string here in front. And the first digit is to do with the ball. So we can set using the first digit we can set the ball's width. If it's set to zero, we get a ball of one pixel wide. If we set it to one, the ball is two pixels wide. Set to two, it's four pixels wide. And in this case here, set to three, it'll be 
8 pixels wide. Now the second digit then is to do with play field control. When it's set to 0, the play field is just normal. If we set it to 1, 2 or 3, we get different things like a play field that's split with uh, different colors on each side and also a play field where the sprites will move in front of or behind the play field. So that's how we can control how our play field works. Again, we're running through our little joystick commands, we're drawing our screen and we're looping back to main to do it all over again. And when we run that particular one, what we will get is we get exactly the same as we had before, but this time our ball, which admittedly is square, is eight pixels wide by eight pixels high. So it's a much bigger ball than what we had before, but we can move it around in exactly the same way. So there you go, that is the ball that is under control of the play field. And in a game, you can pop that in as well and have two sprites, two missiles, and a ball under your control in the game doing all kinds of different stuff. So you can make a game much more interesting now that we've got an extra object that we can add. So the next thing I would like to show you is if you want to put some text on screen. Now this is kind of a lazy, simple way to display a title screen or a game over screen or any of that kind of stuff like that. Now the play field is a little bit different than what we were dealing with before as regards X and Y coordinates because when we were positioning sprites and stuff on screen, our X axis went from one to 159 and our Y axis had a visible area of one to 89 and then it went from 90 right way up to 255 which was pretty much a, a invisible area off screen that we couldn't see. But our actual play field is kind of superimposed on top of our background, which is more or less where we have those X and Y coordinates for, for sprites and things like that. The play field itself is kind of a separate entity on top and its X and Y axis have different positions. So the play fields x-axis, well for the purposes here at least, is 32 pixels wide and its height is 11 pixels high. So when we're drawn our play field on screen, we can assign it a value kind of like we did a sprite, but not really. But pretty much the way to do it is that here I've opened my main loop, I've set the play field color so that we'll have the color of the text we're going to put on screen, whatever color we want. And then what we do is we type play field in lowercase followed by a colon. Now, as the play field is 32 pixels wide, what we do is any of the pixels that we want to be black or blank, we use a period or a full stop to assign those. And any of the pixels that we want to be active or visible, kind of using the play field color, we use a capital X in order to assign those. So here you can see I've got kind of a grid made up that's 11, 32 pixels wide by 11 pixels high. And any of the full stops or periods you see there will be black space or the color of the background. And any of the capital X's will actually be active pixels on the play field. So maybe you can see from looking at it here, I've got pretty much hello Bob with an exclamation mark written out in that way. At the end of it then we type N to show that this little play field function is finished, draw screen and then we go back to main and we loop through it all over again. And when we run that, hopefully what we should get on screen anyway, is this. So it's telling us hello Bob, we've got our play field pixels here which are much different than like what you saw the the regular pixels, I suppose, that make up sprites and all that are much smaller. Like you saw, the first ball was one pixel wide by one pixel high and it was just a mere dot on screen. The play field, like I say, is a separate type of thing imposed on top. So we've got it 32 pixels wide and 11 pixels high here. And you'll see also that it's kind of smaller in every way than the regular screen as well. You've got blank space here at each side, you know. But that is our play field use this text. So it's very handy to be able to, to give the title of your game or you can give a game over screen or any kind of information you want like that in game can be done in this manner. 
Now, on top of that, we can actually scroll the play field, which is very handy to be able to do as well. So I'll show you using exactly the same play field example. We can make it move across the screen, left, right, up and down, whatever we, way we want. So again, using the same hello Bob exclamation mark thing as we used before, written out in exactly the same way, although before the main loop, because Generally, if something's in the main loop, it's going to be updated all the time. So if we tried to scroll something that's in the main loop, it'd be just after trying to move and the main loop reading through it again, would put it back at the beginning position. So it would never actually scroll. So what I've done is I've set it outside of the main loop and then inside the main loop, what I'm doing is I'm setting the color of the play field. And then I'm using my joystick commands again, although what I'm doing this time is I'm using the PF scroll command. So what I've got going here is if joy zero right, then PF scroll, which is the command to make the play field scroll right. So it will actually make the play field scroll to the right. If it's moved to the left, then PF scroll left. If it's moved up or down, I'm using PF scroll up and the PF scroll down command. So that's pretty much all that's to it. We're drawing the screen again, which will, uh, yeah, which will display everything we have on screen and then we're going back to main. So we're just looping in this little area here. And what we'll get if that works for us is we get our Hello Bob displayed on screen again. And now when I move right, the play field will scroll to the right, left it'll scroll to the left, up it'll scroll up and down it'll scroll down. And we can also go on the diagonals if we so wish. But you may have noticed that it scrolls very fast to the right and left, but it only scrolls at kind of half the speed up and down. Well, that's because more or less by default using those commands, it'll only give you one speed to scroll left and right, but it'll give you two speeds if you want to scroll up and down. So we've tapped in PF scroll up and that gives us the speed here when we're scrolling up and PF scroll down gives us the same speed when we're scrolling down. If we wanted to scroll at the same speed as left and right, so like really fast, what we would do is we tap in PF scroll up, up, or PF scroll down, down. So you tap it in without a space between them and you will get the up and down scroll to go at the same speed as left and right scroll. So that's, that's pretty much that on scrolling. There's another thing before we wrap up for today, and that is drawn horizontal and vertical lines without uh, using that play field grid that I was showing you before. There are two commands, PFH line to draw a horizontal line and PFV line to draw a vertical line. And the way we can use those is here, for example, to draw a horizontal line. We have our main loop. We set our play field color again. The command is PFH line, and what we feed it is an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So that's where we want it to start from. So these again are our play field coordinates. So th on the X, it'll be between one and 32. Zero and, zero and 30. I anyway, it'd be a value. <laughs> I've given it three here. And on the Y, I've given it the value of four. And I wanted to finish at 30 on the X axis. So it should draw us a horizontal line across the play field from position three on the X axis, position four on the Y axis, and go right the way across to 30 on the X axis. And you'll see here that I've assigned it on. So that means I want to turn those pixels on. It could equally be assigned off. Or there's a third option, which is flip. And on will turn it on, off will turn it off, and flip is handy to have because in a program, flip will turn it on if it's off and off if it's on. So in this, in this case, anyway, to get it to turn on, we need to tell it we want it to turn it on. And then we go draw the screen and we're looping back to main again, it's doing the same thing. So what we pretty much get when we run that is we get our horizontal line across the screen here. So it's going from the, the values I gave it, I think it was three and four, and right the way up to 30 on the X axis that way. So we've got our horizontal line. Now there's exactly the same command that's used in exactly the same way to draw a vertical line on screen. And that guy there is this guy here, where we use our PFV line and I've set it up to start at three on the X axis, four on the Y axis, and to move right the way along to uh, nine 
on the x-axis as well is that right i can't remember and then we're turning it on and it works in exactly the same way and what we get when we run that particular program is this guy here so we've got our coordinate on the x and y and it's run actually down on the y-axis is the the last command yeah so i don't use these commands very often i'll be honest with you but that is exactly how that works so just to recap over it because i didn't really know what we're doing is we're giving it an x value a y value and then this is where we want it to finish on the y-axis and that is um that is how we can control a little bit on play fields using the Tari Basics. So there's another episode coming up fairly soon where I'll show you a little more on using play fields. And we look at a little bit of maybe the more complexity type stuff. It's not all that much harder though, where we can uh, shoot at a play field and destroy play field pixels and that kind of thing. How they correlate the background uh, XY grid to the playfield xy grid and how we can get those to correlate we'll have a little look at that along with a few other little bits and pieces as well so that'll be coming up fairly soon but listen thanks very very much for um for sticking with me up until now if you haven't played my bob the botanical hedge octopus game which is which is out at this stage uh, i leave a link for it in the description go and check it out and we will talk to you all very very soon until then see ya bye bye